again and welcome to yet another segment of Independence Over the Years. Today we focus on the 20th anniversary. The highlight of that year's celebration was the visit by the Prince of Wales. Let's now join Marcelina John. Bon fête Saint Lucie. Happy 10th birthday Saint Lucia. Three chants for Saint Lucia. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Your Royal Highness, Prince Charles of Wales, Your Excellency and Wife, Mr. and Mrs. James, Honorable Prime Minister and Wife, Mr. and Mrs. Janice Compton, John Compton, excuse me, Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, Members of Government, Distinguished guests, school children. Indeed, words cannot express the joy, the feeling of unity, the patriotic love we feel today as we rally together to celebrate this 10th birthday. It is in this spirit that I, on behalf of this large family gathered here, wish my brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers, a happy 10th anniversary. I am more than honored on behalf of this family to extend a warm welcome to you, Your Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, no less a member of our family. Today holds the climax of our independence celebrations. As we reach the zenith, we look back at our country, at its achievements. Each one of us, no less patriotic than the other, realizes indeed, though a rose bush is always characterized by its thorns, in our tree, the beauty of that flower is so illuminous that we become charged with a will, a purpose, and spur on our journey towards creating that dreamland for ourselves. Our country has taught us to be confident in ourselves as young people who hold the future of St. Lucia in our hands. Today, we are overjoyed. We are elated, and rightly so, for we have cause to be. And as we proceed to wish our country happy birthday, we present to St. Lucia no better gift than what she gave us ourselves. But we have bettered that gift. We have used our creativity, our imagination, our initiative, and our enthusiasm. And we present her with our talents, a symbol of our ingenuity, which she herself bestowed upon us. Our first song, Unity, was composed by Inspector Rudolph Charles and is very popular with school children and adults. It is a national song and emphasizes the fact that unity is a necessary part of our growth as a nation. We also place all our endeavors in the hands of God in whom we get all the confidence we need to progress.
I will now call on the Honorable Minister for Education and Culture, Honorable Louis George, to give the welcome address. It is a privilege and an honor for me to extend the welcome to Your Royal Highness, to this fair isle, and to this rally. We are indeed very happy that you have graced us with your presence. Your visit is a fitting testimony of the significance of the occasion which we are here celebrating. Today marks a very significant milestone in the life of our country. It was 10 years ago on this memorable day that the government and people of St. Lucia assumed full responsibility for the affairs of this country. That occasion ushered in a unique opportunity for us as St. Lucians to be involved in the important task of shaping our destiny and to participate in the exciting drama of achieving true political, economic, and social independence. The results of our trials and our efforts over those years are manifested in various forms. The fabric of our society has been shaped by the developmental strategies that the government and people have pursued during that period. Our achievements can be measured by the improvements in the quality of life of our people and the dramatic progress made by the various sectors of our society. Every individual, every nation, sets aside someday for special observance. And so today, we celebrate 10 years of nationhood. Our reflections on this special occasion should imbue us with the satisfaction that we have all worked together as a people, united with a common sense of purpose in seeking to achieve the best for ourselves, our children, and our beloved country. But the excitement of that occasion should in no way blind us to the realities, problems, and challenges of nation building, and to the need to create an environment of equal opportunities for the growth and development of our people. The provision of education for all, so that our people can achieve knowledge, understanding, and skills to develop a just and virtuous society as a principle of our development is axiomatic. We must continue to strive towards these ideals in the years to come. The character of our country tomorrow depends on the extent to which our young people are equipped to assume the mantle of responsibility. To place emphasis on the youth is to articulate an act of faith in a better tomorrow for our people. It's in this context that the youth rally is highlighted in all our celebrations. It is for this reason that I invite the youth of St. Lucia and you, my dear children, to share in the felicitations, the joy, the love, and the grandeur of our celebrations. The various activities organized during the past weeks have in many ways attempted to create in you a sense of cooperation, unity, and nationalism. The various artistic and dramatic presentations, the many social and educational programs have all been designed to heighten the awareness of the important contributions that you can make towards nation building. Let me therefore impress upon you of the need to rededicate yourselves to the task of building a strong nation, a nation that will grow and continue to advance in peace and prosperity, a nation that will be concerned to promote the good and welfare of all her people. I take this opportunity to personally congratulate the people and the teachers of this country, in particular, for your contributions and your dedication to the cause of education in this nation. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Indeed, independence means that we hold 
our destiny in our hands. And as young people, faith has been placed in us. Our country looks up to us tomorrow to build a stronger nation, an even better nation. I am light, I am love, I am St. Lucia. This next rendition was written by Mr. Clement Springer. We are telling ourselves that we are not divorced from our motto, the land, the people, the light. From colonialism to independence, someone had to do it. He has been known by many names, one of them, the father of the nation. St. Lucian's distinguished guests, I give you none other than the Right Honorable Prime Minister, John George Melvin Compton. Three cheers for the Prime Minister. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Today is a special day in the lives of all St. Lucians, be they young or be they old, be they at home with us today or abroad having their memories with us. As all of us turn our hearts homeward to celebrate together this 10th year of the independence of our country. But you, the children who are assembled here today, will have special memories of this day because to celebrate with us is a very honored guest, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And in your name and on your behalf, I bid him welcome to St. Lucia.
that Prince Charles has honored us with his presence at this celebration is not only the highest team in which our country is held, but also his sense of duty and service, which takes him to all parts of this far from Commonwealth of which St. Lucia is a part. But we have with us not only Prince Charles, we have with us the leaders of other friendly nations. We have with us today the Prime Minister of Barbados, and I bid you to give him a special welcome. The others here representing their country at the ambassadorial level, countries with whom we have special relations, whether by geography and by history. And I want to thank them for doing us the honor for being here with us today. I also once want to thank the servicemen from the visiting navies that participated with us, with our Royal St. Lucia Police Force, with our fire services, with our reserves, with our cadets, with our St. John's Ambulance, with other voluntary organizations, to put on that magnificent parade that we saw last night. I want to think, tell them that it's a special honor they have done to us. We consider the presence of His Royal Highness not merely as adding royal glamour and dignity to these our celebrations, but let that sense of duty and service which brings him here be an inspiration to you, our youth. His concern for the poor and the underprivileged has earned him the respect and the affection throughout the world. His personal involvement in the preservation of things beautiful and the protection of our environment has focused governmental attention and galvanized public response to an aspect of human behavior which, unless corrected, can leave us with a sad legacy for us and for our children. The interest of His Royal Highness in St. Lucia is not confined to royal and ceremonial duties. When Hurricane Allen struck in St. Lucia in 1980, Prince Charles was one of the first persons to send a financial contribution to St. Lucia through our mission in London. He has shown his concern to the rehabilitation of those of our youth who have fallen victim to drug abuse and given the impetus to our economic development through his chairmanship of the Commonwealth Development Corporation, which was responsible for things that we know so intimately as the Rodney Bay development, the generation and distribution of electricity to the remotest communities of this island, the provision of homes for our people through the St. Lucia Mortgage Finance Company. These are the bonds of friendship which give added meaning to his royal presence here amongst us. His Royal Highness has visited St. Lucia before as a young naval officer. And even in his all too brief stay on this occasion, he would have seen many physical changes and improvements we have made in our country. This is in keeping with the pledge that we made on this very ground 10 years ago when we obtained our independence and the responsibility for our own affairs. We pledged, the children who stood in your places pledged, that we would endeavor to fulfill this pledge, that not only we would do no worse than those who hitherto, hitherto controlled our destiny, but we shall strive to do better than they did. And I'm sure that looking around, we would say that we have done better. Now, 10 years later, we can look around and see how well we had kept that pledge, as the evidence is all around us. Today, we have not only have more children at school, but we have more schools and more teachers, teachers better trained and equipped to impart education to our children. 
We've expanded the basic human needs of water, electricity, and health services to every major community on this island. We've encouraged our farmers to increase the productivity, and they have responded. We have sought to keep our country peaceful and beautiful, and visitors have flocked to our shores to share with us that alluring and magical beauty of our land. Although there is still much to be done, more of our people are at work today than any time in our history. So today, we have every reason to thank our God and celebrate this important milestone in our history. Your Royal Highness would note that in these celebrations, as in the past, we have placed much emphasis upon our youth, their achievements, and their hopes. We have planned much of our celebrations around them, as this is the foundation upon we wish to build out the future of our country. A country as small as ours, which has but little influence in the councils of the world, where decisions are made which determine the future of our country. We are fortunate, however, that we are a member of the Commonwealth Family of Nations, where the application of moral principles ensure that the rights of small nations are not trampled underfoot. In the security of this family, we can spend our limited resources upon the education of our children and not squander it upon weapons of war. Today, one third of all our public expenditure is spent on the education of our youth, giving them the opportunities for advancement that their grandfathers and grandmothers, and even their fathers and mothers, never had. I therefore implore you, children, to use this opportunity wisely. Use it to move to greater and greater heights of achievement. Use it that you can build that rung of ladder of progress upon which your own children can ascend to greater and greater heights of achievement. As you, our children, meet to celebrate our 20th anniversary, and your own children, when they celebrate the 20th anniversary, they'll be meeting to usher in the 21st century with all ex exciting possibilities. The quality of life in St. Lucia then will depend upon the preparation that you make now how well you prepare yourself to meet life's challenges and to grasp life's opportunities. Whether St. Lucia will be in the vanguard of progress or in the backwaters of decline will depend upon you, upon whose shoulders the responsibility of leadership in every field will fall. It is for you to sustain and advance the progress of St. Lucia and prepare the ground for the next generation who will succeed you. But your ambitions, your hopes, your dreams should not be confined within the narrow borders of a small island. As sooner or later, you will try to move to greener pastures, and St. Lucia and the Caribbean will be poorer for your absence. You must therefore raise your sights and look beyond the borders of our small island to the wider Caribbean, as there is where your future lies. You must resist the temptation to seek brief but destructive thrills through drugs, to squander your youth in idleness, because one of the things that come not back is a wasted youth or a lost opportunity. You have shared, the, have been spared the rigors of military service, must concentrate upon giving community service, be it through sports, through the service club, to the youth choirs, or other forms which enriches your life and elevate your community. A number of you who have given such service will today be receiving from His Royal Highness and in the presence of your parents, your proud parents, and all St. Lucia, that rich reward for your efforts, the Duke of Edinburgh Award. To you and all of those who helped urge and encourage you, my heartfelt congratulations. To many of our youth who are here today, who stood in your very places some 10 years ago, they pledged to do better. They have made us proud of their achievements in every field. May we be as proud of you 10 years hence as we are proud of you today. May God bless you and guide you always. And let us together strive to build that nation where in the words of our anthem, justice, truth, and charity, our ideas forever be. God bless you. 
God bless the Prince of Wales, and God bless our nation. Indeed, Honourable Prime Minister, we have every reason to thank God. And we hope and pray that God, who has been our inspiration and also our leaders, will certainly take us to greater heights of achievement. St. Lucia has many reasons to be proud. And one of the things St. Lucia is proud of is her beautiful island. Our next song, Beautiful Isle, was written by Miss Linda Banks and the music composed by Miss Joyce Auguste. now have a cultural presentation by the schools of our nation. The choreography was done by Miss Virginia Alexander. Our cultural presentation is entitled, They Danced and Sung for Fair Helen. Was this the face that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of Ilium? From the play Dr. Faustus by Christopher Marlowe. Yes, the face of Helen had brought about the Trojan Wars and in the same way, the face of Helen of the West had brought many suitors to this part of the world. 
they came in search of the beautiful Helen of the West. Some came for adventure. Some came to plunder. Some came for gold. Some came in search of beauty. Some came for conquest. Some came for love. Some came to work. Some came in chains. Opening dramatization is done by um, the they Anglican Primary Schools. By the indescribable beauty of Helen, they wished to possess her, to bask in her. But first, they had to win her favor. And while some fought furiously for Helen, others danced and sang their way into the favor of Helen. Many nations danced for Helen. The Spanish conquistadors came and danced for Helen. The Spanish conquistadors um, make up uh, members of Laser Far, a mixed school group. 